Iron and magnesium. Each micronutrient has specific roles in plant metabolism, but the key to having a lush green lawn throughout the growing season is ensuring your iron and magnesium levels in the soil are adequate. Now the green color in plants comes from chlorophyll, a heavily pigmented molecule that is responsible for photosynthesis, which as we know is the process by which plants create sugar from sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. Now chlorophyll is synthesized through a long series of metabolic reactions inside plant cells, and iron is needed in several of those synthetic steps. So where does the magnesium come in? A single magnesium atom can be found at the center of every chlorophyll molecule. So without iron and magnesium, plants wouldn't be able to produce chlorophyll. Now chlorosis is a common condition in turf and other plants where iron and magnesium deficiencies can cause plants to turn a pale or yellow color. If your turf is exhibiting these symptoms, you may have an iron or magnesium deficiency. Of note, low levels of nitrogen can also cause chlorosis-like symptoms, so always ensure your plants have an abundance of nitrogen. Now that we understand the importance of iron in plants, let's take a brief look at some of the more common sources of iron in the fertilizer industry, as there are many. Again, iron isn't packaged in a fertilizer blend in its elemental form. It comes in the forms of sulfates, oxides, sucrates, chelates, and coupled with organic matter. While this list may seem overwhelming, each form of iron has certain advantages and disadvantages. Once you understand the properties of each, it becomes apparent why certain sources of iron are preferred in certain situations. Let's take a brief look at this chart citing some common examples of iron used in turf fertilizers. At the top, we have ferric and ferrous sulfate. Note that these compounds have a relatively low iron content, only 20 to 23% by weight. However, sulfates are very soluble, which means the iron is more readily dissolvable in water and available for plants to take up. Sulfates are relatively inexpensive and can give turf a quick green up in only a few days, but they do have one drawback. They tend to stain concrete in pools relatively easily. Now, if you're a greenskeeper fertilizing your fairways, this won't be an issue. But if you're a lawn care operator, you wouldn't want to get a complaint from your customers about stained sidewalks. In response to problems with staining, the fertilizer industry created iron sucrate, which is essentially a granulated iron wrapped in a sugar coating. Iron sucrates can easily be blended with any fertilizer analysis and spread conventionally. If an iron sucrate granule strikes concrete, it can easily be swept or blown off without causing any staining. Note that iron sucrate has twice as much iron by weight compared to iron sulfate. However, it does have one major drawback. It's not very soluble, which means an applicator is going to need to use a lot more iron sucrate compared to iron sulfate to get a nice green up. And that green up may take several weeks to become apparent. Next, you'll notice that ferric and ferrous oxides have a much higher iron content between 69 and 77% by weight. The advantage of these iron sources is they're fairly inexpensive. However, the drawback is they're just as or less soluble than iron sucrate. That's because most oxides have little or no solubility in water. So again, if you're looking to get a quick green up, iron oxides probably aren't your best bet. Next, let's examine iron chelates or chelated iron. We often hear the term chelated in the fertilizer industry, but many don't actually understand what that means. Chelation simply refers to a metal ion or atom that is temporarily bonded to or surrounded by an organic complex. An organic complex is just a large carbon-based molecule. In essence, chelated metals are protected or encapsulated by organic material. There are three major types of chelated iron used in the fertilizer industry. EDTA iron, DPTA iron, and EDDHA iron. Each of these chelated irons has a different binding affinity. Now the term binding affinity can best be explained by comparing different kinds of magnets. Some magnets are easy to pull apart, like pulling a refrigerator magnet off a refrigerator. And some magnets are almost impossible to pull apart, like trying to pry two rare earth magnets. Of the three chelated irons listed in our table, EDTA iron is by far the most commonly used in the industry. This is because it has a relatively weak binding affinity, which means it releases its iron relatively easily so plants can take it up. So why do we use chelated irons? Simply put, they are 100% soluble and provide plants with a relatively quick green up, typically within only a few days of application. Note that chelated irons are only 1 to 14% iron by weight, which is very little. However, a little bit of iron goes a very long way because again, chelated iron is 100% soluble. 
Not surprisingly, chelated irons are much more expensive than other iron sources, hence they are typically only used in specialty situations. Chelated irons usually come in powdered form and are tacked onto granular fertilizer during the manufacturing process. Because chelated irons are 100% soluble, they are often preferred for use in liquid fertilizer formulations, but beware, chelated iron does stain. You definitely don't want to get it on your concrete or pool walls. Of note, iron isn't the only micronutrient available in chelated form. Chelated manganese, copper, zinc, and other micronutrients can also be found in the market, and the principles are the same. In summary, iron sources can vary by iron content, solubility, staining tendency, and price. Understanding the environment in your iron or any micronutrient will be used in will help you select a fertilizer blend that works best for you and at the best possible price.